West to Harmin Freon and welcome to another video. This video, my friends, is dedicated to one viewer, one subscriber specifically, and that is Rosie Gamgee, who explicitly asked me to review this film. And I said to myself, well, what the heck, why not, since I've already watched it, I was forced to watch it. Well, I might as well review it, at least it won't be that much of a waste of my time. And don't get me wrong, my friends, that film was not bad in particular, which would have been better, maybe, than what the film actually is. Because the film, my dear friends, is only a bland pudding of a beige color for consumers who like to turn off and switch off their brains and look at flashing images and jumping characters from here to there and speaking in grave and important tones. The film is oversaturated with exposition and exposition after exposition after exposition. I'm of course talking about Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, a, a part of the fourth uh, line, fourth wave, fourth phase, yeah, they call it phases, phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe or MCU or as some people or some reviewers on YouTube call it MCU, which well, be honest with ourselves, it is quite fitting. Uh, I am going to talk about the positives first, because uh, as a long time, a lifelong comic book fan and a comic book aficionado, I was able to see some things, it was two scenes, it was two scenes, that I went, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And one of them wasn't even comic book related. Uh, the the biggest problem is if you are a genuine comic book fan and, and you know something about the comic books and the history of the individual comic book lines and the characters. And then you see all the changes that they are doing to the characters today. Demasculinizing men, making every single male character into a joke, into uh, a, a, a clown, empowering all the females, getting rid of their femininity altogether... Uh, ridding them of uh, their beauty and making them into what? Into a bland uh, character that uh, will only kick everybody else's bottoms. That's not entertainment. That's, uh, well, maybe for some people, but definitely not for me. And don't get me wrong, I am not looking for depth in a Marvel movie. Most certainly not. I, I am not... You know, I don't want, uh, from a Marvel movie, I don't want the same thing as I wanted from, I don't know, for example, uh, uh, Citizen Kane or The Seven Samurai or The Godfather, uh, films that have become classics and icons of cinematography and uh, have entered the history of very serious and very good films. Um, and also, I belong, <coughs> sorry, among the people who, were actually excited about the phase one, or the first phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this when all of this craziness started, and we were able to see some of the characters who might have not been very popular in their comic book form suddenly enter the big screen, and they were actually good, they were very well made, and the, the films were good, they were funny, they were action-packed, they were suspenseful, uh, the humor was still uh, f actually humorous, it was not bland, it wasn't as if they had um, just just one template for every single Marvel film, because the latest two phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films and the TV shows that uh, have been aired on Disney+, Plus, they all have a template. There are characters who are replaced by uh, their... Uh, successors by the um, some sort of hand-me-down knockoffs, such as we could see in Hawkeye, such as we could see in. Um, and now I do. I hope I won't be mistaken it for their comic book versions because some things are still in works. I know that um, Iron Man was replaced by Riri Williams, but that is only to happen in the films. 
but we can see that in the latest Thor movie that is going to come out, right? Thor is going to be replaced by Jane Foster, who is going to take the mantle, and Thor is, of course, not a mantle, it's a name. Uh, you know, the, the, we've got here, in this particular film, there is Wanda Maximoff, who was an interesting character in comic books. She was in <clears throat> the House of M storyline. She caused a, a, almost a complete eradication of uh, the uh, mutant gene uh, when she said no more mutants. So she rid uh, a, a huge majority of the mutant population of their powers. She was extremely interesting, very well written at times, character, the daughter of Magneto, interesting, very well written uh, character, many people's favorite uh, female protagonist uh, or a character in general. Here she's just a psycho and of course she's the most powerful being in the world. Why would we need the Sorcerer Supreme? Why would we need Doctor Strange? Of course Doctor Strange is put into the back seat in this film even though the film is called Doctor Strange. The protagonist here, the true protagonist is Wanda Maximoff and America Chavez. A character about whom I know virtually nothing because she is one of those um, diversity characters that were created just for the sole purpose of inclusion, representation and diversity a couple of years ago, I believe. I have stopped reading the, my, the mainstream Marvel comics that were newly published a couple of years ago. I, my favorite uh, era of Marvel is the, the 80s and the 90s. That's my jam. Uh, so I you know it's just it's it's a yeah I know a character who has extreme powers and she doesn't even have to do anything. She she doesn't have to train. I mean Doctor Strange he trained for years. Every single good old character, be it male or female, they even though they were gifted with great powers. They had to train, they had to learn how to use the powers, they had to learn the responsibility, because as we know from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. It's not so much with characters like, like America Chavez. She's got the powers, and in the end of the film, she's like the master uh, you know, at the, her powers, even though she didn't train a second of the film. It's like the bloody Ray from the Star Wars sequel trilogy. She was gifted with the, an, an extreme uh, capabilities in, in the Force. She didn't have to train the same way Luke did, or Anakin did, or every single other Jedi in the history of the Order did. Um... <laughs> I wanted to talk about the positives. <laughs> the positives were, uh, and now of course there are going to be spoilers in this video. I might be saying it a bit late, but never mind. Uh, there was Bruce Campbell cameo. <laughs> Bruce Campbell cameo. And that's, I believe, because, just because the film was directed by Sam Raimi. And that is why I'm saying that the film was not bad. Because Sam Raimi is an extremely talented, an extremely good director. Just watch Evil Dead, Evil Dead to the Army of Darkness. Bloody hell, he directed the first uh, Spider-Man films with Tobey Maguire that were awesome. So he's a good director, but the biggest problem is the studio influence, Disney. And that's where it all ends. You could hire the best director in the world, but as long as there is the Disney studio influence, you're bumped. So the, uh, the cameo of Bruce Campbell was awesome. And then I, my comic book fan heart felt uplifted when I saw a part of the Illuminati, more specifically uh, Mr. Fantastic, who was admittedly, yes, that version from Dan Slott's Fantastic Four, which is, I think, the worst version of Fantastic Four, the worst run, the worst comic book series of the Fantastic Four ever written in the history of Marvel Comics. So he was that version, apparently, uh, judging based on his looks. But never mind, it was Dr. Fantastic, uh, Mr. Fantastic, so I was glad to see him. And of course, Professor X, because X-Men's my favorite comic books uh, by uh, Marvel Comics. So yeah, seeing uh, Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier once again in the chair, the, the hover chair, the yellow hover chair that he used in the X-Men, the animated series, and in the 1990s X-Men comic books, and before... 
that was awesome to see, of course. And that's when, of course, it happened once again. The MCU prevailed and Wanda Maximoff had to fight the Illuminati and she eradicated... That, I have to admit, was <laughs> one of the cases where you could really see that the movie was directed by Sam Raimi. They were killed by Wanda Maximoff in awesome ways, that has to be admitted. That those, those deaths were kind of brutal. So she got rid of uh, Black Bolt immediately. She got rid of uh, Mr. Fantastic, of course, immediately. Uh, and the only two, uh, of course, then she killed uh, Charles Xavier as the last one. But Charles Xavier should be uh, the strongest telepath in the world, right? But she had no problem killing him, of course. The only two characters who were able to fight Wanda, at least for some time, were, of course, the two female parts or the two female members of the Illuminati. And there was the hand me now knockoff of Captain America, the what if Captain, uh, not Captain Britain, um, the, the, the chick, uh, Carter, Captain Carter. And of course the hand me now knockoff, uh, Mar Captain Marvel, which of course, if you know anything about the comic books, Shazam is the original Captain Marvel. But there were some copyright issues and names disputes between Marvel and DC. And DC had to get rid of the name Marvel because, you know, Marvel Comics. So they, Marvel Comics devised their own Captain Marvel, who was a man first. And then a female and so on and so forth. But this version and the version with that chick, the, um, I don't even know. I, ha I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen Captain Marvel and I will never watch it. But that was horrendous. That 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 was that was. Ugh. All right. What else? What I appreciated also was um, the the effects, the CGI, and the special effects, and how they approach the multiverse in this particular film. I'm specifically talking about one thing: uh, when Doctor Strange possessed <laughs> a, a dead body of his own self from another reality. That looked very Sam raimi -ish. So as you can see, as you can hear, from what I'm telling you, every single thing that I am talking about, that I liked, every single thing that I pointed out that's positive in my eyes, was really Sam Raimi. Was Sam Raimi's influence, Sam Raimi's doing it. But these are the positives. Otherwise, it's a template-made MCU or MCU film done in 2021, 2020, from the phase four. A story filled with, um, uh, you know, <sighs> bland characters who are having endless exposition uh, talks and dialogues, just explaining the story over and over again the males being incompetent, the females being almighty. And in the end, I don't even remember what the point of it all, what what the point of it was. Yeah, I, I know that Wanda Maximoff wanted to have kids, so she wanted to get to another reality where she had kids. And in order to do, to do that, she had to capture America Chavez because her power was that she could travel between the different multiverse, you know, in between the multiverse, between the different universes. And the, 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 the task of Doctor Strange and company was to stop her from doing that. And in between all this, she eradicated everything and everybody standing in her way. Ugh, all right, it was, I mean, those awesome th aspects of the film were distributed in between the blandness so nicely that I managed not to fall asleep. So the first very good thing there was, was the cameo of Bruce Campbell, which also contained one of the tropes that Sam Raimi uses in his films, and that's... Um, like, violence committed upon oneself, almost Laurel and Hardy kind of thing. 
so he was beating himself because Doctor Strange made him do uh, do that, and it reminded me of it reminded me of Evil Dead and the Army of Darkness, of course. So yeah, that's that's the gist of it. The finishing thoughts are: I don't recommend this film. There are much better films made in the past. If you want to enjoy a good comic book movie, just go back and watch the older films. This is nothing new. This is yet another consumer product made by Disney Marvel to please the eye and ear of a consumer who is not looking for a a good product. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. It was meh. And that may be worse of all when, when something is meh. All right. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm out of here.